David Clark. Um, I again have a, a question that I hope the Minister can provide some clarification on. Uh, and it, it goes back, if we, if we trace it back, the Minister and the Chair might like to follow uh, the logic and, and explain to me if I've understood it correctly or not. Part two on page 61 of the bill refers to the new schedule 1AA that will be inserted uh, into the Act. And that uh, schedule contains um, clause 8 uh, on page 65 that reads that despite section 95B of this Act, as inserted section 56 of the 2013 Act, an employer must not make a specified deduction of pay in relation to uh, A, any partial strike that ended before the commencement of the 2013 Act, or B, any period of a partial strike that occurred before the commencement of the 2013 Act. That, the effect of, of that, uh, that clause is that it means that while the proposed strike tax in, in Clause 56 in Part 1 cannot be applied to partial strike action that has already occurred, it can apply to partial strikes already underway from the date of the Act coming into effect. Um, and, and which effectively means that workers who have already committed to strike action with no expectation of pay deductions could find themselves penalised. Now, I want to raise, uh, for me, there's an issue of natural justice uh, here, which is at issue. So if the workers are already engaged in partial strike action, and that is of an ongoing nature, the Act comes into effect, and, and they've already committed to that course of action, they can then be penalised for a decision that was made before the Act uh, was even thought of. Um, and, or at least uh, certainly before it was being considered by this parliament. So um, that, to me, raises an issue of natural justice. And, and I'm wanting to know, I guess, whether the minister is trying to create a precedent here that suggests uh, that uh, natural justice should no longer apply. I mean, I, I personally see some parallels uh, in a, a local case in Dunedin North where we had um, some school buses uh, that were visiting... Um, uh, that were taking students from uh, to the nearest state school and, and not much further but to deliver them to other schools in the area. And uh, a, a rule was interpreted differently by the, the last, the government that was in the last parliament that took away the right of students to travel on that bus unless they were going to the nearest state school. Um, and it was a, an interpretation of the rules that was different from that which had applied before. And I'm sure the Minister and the Chair is familiar with this example because he was uh, he had a transport uh, portfolio at the time, uh, and, um, and, and I did petition him uh, at some length to consider uh, the natural justice aspects of taking away um, uh, the, the right previously enjoyed by students to travel to any school in the city on the school bus, uh, provided it only took them as far as the, the, the local state schools. Uh, effectively, the students were then uh, either allowed to travel on the bus once the rule was reinterpreted, uh, if they had the right uniform on or not allowed to travel on the bus if they didn't have the right uniform on, despite the fact that they had signed up for that school, despite the fact that their parents had invested in the uniforms for that school, despite the fact that they were engaged in the, in the, uh, in the sports teams at that school. Um, those, those parents who had invested and those children who had invested in that particular school uh, were then told that natural justice didn't apply effectively, that they were uh, no longer entitled to travel on that bus. I'm, uh, they I'm, were... I'm now going to uh, interrupt the member and ask him now to stop the novel and get back to the relevant. <laughs> Thank you. Mr Speaker, I, I will come back to the point which I'm trying to make, which is one of natural justice, uh, where there's an expectation of one course of action uh, when, an, when an action was initiated and uh, the effect of uh, a, a change of understanding, in this case a change in the law, uh, that would have a very different effect. And so in uh, Clause 8, um, the worker who's already committed to strike action with no expectation of pay deductions finds himself penalised. And so I'm wanting to ask the Minister if this was the intention when this was drafted. Was this drafted specifically to punish 
those workers who had already committed to strike action to curtail their existing strike action, or is this an unintended consequence? Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair. Chris Bishop. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman. Stuart Nash. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman.